When I pull up in the spot, they be asking what I got. Yeah, it's for an extra mile, an extra inch for the dot. When I pull up in the spot, better show me what you got. Red beam. Welcome to another smashing episode of Podcast with Soul. My name is Samuel Soul. I'm not alone. I'm with my boy, Honest the Bowling. Yeah. And on today's episode, we're going to be having our very first female guest on this episode. She goes by the name of Lindelani and also known as My Sunflower. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Hello. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, that is abroad. Um, you want to know about myself? And what you do? Well, um, as you said, my name is Lindelani. Actually, it's Lindelani. Okay. Lindelani, also known as My Sunflower. So I'm a radio, a community radio uh, um, presenter. And yeah, that is all around. Okay, the name, My Sunflower. Mm -hmm. can, you explain, uh, can you explain to us how did it come about and what does it mean to you? So, um, I think it was early this year if not late last year so i've always loved sunflowers right oh, okay. and then i think late last year actually when i started off with this radio thing going on that's where i started on a journey of self-discovery you know getting to know myself a little bit more because never did i even think that i'll be here where i am right now okay. so when i started with the journey of self-discovery i actually noticed that i are normal people always say they love themselves i actually didn't love myself the way i should have and then i started um undergoing that uh, that journey of self-love and then being a person who always loved sunflowers and how they grew up out, oh, okay. you know, the story behind the sunflowers. And I just referred myself as my sunflower because at first it was my love. I'd call myself my love, you know. I love you, my love. I mean, it's, it makes more sense than, when, than me saying I love myself. Yeah, you know, when I say I love you, my love, and I love you, my, I love myself, it's two different things. So that's how the name actually came about. My sunflower. My sunflower. So the love for radio, when did it start? Um, the love for radio, actually, um, I, I would say there was no love for radio in a nutshell because it's radio is not something that I've always wanted to do. I didn't even study anything media related. It's only now that I'm like, oh no, I have to go and study something that is related to media because I'm an, I'm an accounting girl, you know? And then along the way of me trying to get some opportunities and everything, I just came across this radio um, opportunity and then I ran with it. So that's how you discovered that you have a love for radio? Yeah, 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 that's how I did. Let me just tell you the story of how I actually started with okay. um, the radio thing. So it was last year, 2021, in Jan. Um, so I was working for this other company in 2020, I had like the 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 the, the grad. Oh, I was in the graduate program, you know. And with that graduate program, so what they do is they hire you as their graduate program, and then company A hires you, and then they take you to company B. So I was working there at company B, doing what I've studied, and for some part of it, I wasn't happy when it comes to the work environment. And then I went to company A. I, I told them that I am not. I'm literally not happy here. Can I move somewhere else? You know? And then they were like, I it's so since you want to move, where are you gonna go? Because at this point it's January, we don't have anything else for you. Exactly. If you can go look for something else outside. So that's where I started. I was actually going physically knocking on, on these companies during COVID and some some some, some of the companies would be like, No, we, we're not allowing anyone in, you know, the security is able to block you for from entering the premises. And then a friend of mine, or let me say a colleague from company A, told me about this radio, um, uh, Salute FM. And oh, okay. actually that was the first time, not not entirely the first time, but I've heard about it, that, oh, there's Salute FM, there's Salute FM. And then he told me, oh, you, maybe you should go there, you know, maybe they, they can have something for you. And then when I went there, I was like, I, I mean, it's, it's a community radio, they should have the, the finance yeah, department, the finance department yeah. exactly i'll handle that because that's what i know so when you actually went to school like when you wanted yeah. to, do, to be in the uh the finance department Literally, you didn't yes. actually think that they're going to give you a show yes yes so how did it how did you feel the first time you you had to present your show the first episode like your first show how was yeah. it so um so what happened was i went there and the lady was like okay come 
because I went there on Thursday. She's like, oh, come on Monday at, at, at half past eight. Don't be late. Be on time. When they Monday, I'm like, I'm preparing. I'm thinking maybe it's your interview kind of thing. When I got there, um, surprisingly enough, she's like, oh, I'm doing the nine to twelve show, so you're gonna come through with, uh, as well. I had as, this, as a guest presenter. As a guest was, presenter, okay. yes, you're gonna come through as a guest presenter. I was with the other colleague of mine, with two of us. She's like, no, you guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna present this show together. She didn't even say that. She didn't even say in advance that you guys were going to present with you. So she was like, I, let's go ahead. And then it went on. And to answer your question on how I felt, it was I was anxious most of the time. Because I'm like, what, what, what if I say something wrong? What if I say something that I shouldn't say? I don't know much about this media thing. There's, there must be a protocol to it, you know. But to my surprise, I ran with it. So now you have your own show. Yes, now I have my from own what show. Time to what time? Um, it's from nine up until twelve. Um, it is every Saturday. So um, it, actually, before I got to me having my own show, I was remember that lady who was training us, and then she trained us, trained us. Three weeks down the line, she's like, oh no, actually she trained us. I think the first week she left us, we were two on the show. And then we did that the second week. The third week, she's like, no, you can do the show alone. I was doing that show from 9 to 12. Um, I think I did it for like six months or six, seven months. And then that's way I got something some way. And then I had to move into yeah, it. So, that's okay. so who, who actually helped you to prepare your first show? Um, it was Tembega, the lady from oh, Yeah, okay. So she, she helped you through the whole process of how to prepare the first show? Yes. Yes. She taught me how to, pr uh, to produce how to say certain things, how to present, how to broadcast the news and everything. Because I was but, also But weren't you scared that um, people wouldn't like like your show, wouldn't listen to your show because you're new in this radio thing yeah. and you don't really have much experience and uh -huh. you didn't study radio? Not even. I was not even thinking about anyone. So funny was like, enough. Hey, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in it to win it. Like I was not even thinking about or someone would come and be like oh i don't like your show or anyone because i was not even thinking about anyone remember i was desperate looking for something, for something. and that something came and i was just like i i actually i didn't even think of anyone i would lie if I, i'd say no i was afraid i didn't even think of anyone at first but as time went as our people were actually giving me the critique that's why i was like oh flip people are actually listening and they have uh, uh, opinions so now you'd say that you would consider uh, taking uh, radio mm -hmm. and forget about your fi uh, finances would you just stick with radio and presenting or would you go back to finance well uh, it's that is a tricky question because at the moment I'm still on the, the, the or what I've studied for and at the same time doing the radio but because I, I would say I'm doing both as well, okay, so you balance, you're trying to balance the both. Um, yes, yes. Basically, I am. So, um, would you say that uh, radio, like there's a new social media, there's new internet platforms like your podcast, mm -hmm. do you think that they're slowly replacing the traditional radios or they just, it's going to be radio and uh, podcast that they're going to coexist or do you mm -hmm. feel like podcasts are going to replace radio? No way. There's no way. You know why I'm saying no any other thing can replace radio you get into a taxi they are listening to radio but do you think you do listen to radio they do they do because a lot of people are on smartphones which is they don't have radios on their smartphones well so on the all people that have well on, on on the smartphones on the smartphones that's where they get to stream i mean i feel like the youth that the ones that are streaming more than old people the old people they still want that radio thing turn it on and go to the frequencies stream and then the youth they they more on the uh uh, uh streamline thing they want well the moment i tell them go listen to my show they don't even ask the frequency all they ask for is send me a link of of the, uh, of the show okay yes. so you think it won't replace radio at some point no not not if they I've, I've, I've checked out the numbers of radios mm -hmm. and comparing to podcasts i feel like radio is declining a bit yeah correct me correct me if i'm wrong yeah. but i feel like radio is really really declining no i feel like it's because it's, a lot of people are moving into the digital world yeah they're leaving radio behind I mean, it's as much as we are moving to the digital platform. Remember, radio is also moving to that digital platform. We have stations that do have like your apps where you can go there and catch up with the previous um, uh, interview they had with the previous artist or 
whoever um, the, the person was. And they also have the, the, at that same app, you can do a lot of things. It's just that with other radio stations, they're still not there, but they are getting there bit by bit. I mean, as much as the, 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 this, this time that we're living in, it's shifting from this point to the other point, yeah, we are point, getting yeah. to see that as well. But, but I've, I've, I've seen how a lot of young people are actually complaining about radio that they no longer looking for talent, they just put on um, whoever is the numbers on, on, on social media, they just put on. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Well, that is, I think it's, 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 it robs. Do you think they're killing radio? Yeah. They're killing the talent or they're just growing the radio uh, numbers? Well, I think with that, it's, I mean, let's be honest, it doesn't happen with the radio only. That, it's other other things yeah. other platforms where people just go in because they have certain numbers they have certain followers someone would get this gig because they have certain number uh, uh fan base on their uh following or on their pay or well, social yeah, media page, page yeah. than someone who has their role talent to actually get on and run with it i mean it's not it's not a good thing but it's life is not fair isn't it it's and it's fair. it's gonna but, happen anytime in the instance uh like the quality of radio is mm -hmm. fine do you think it's declining or you guys are growing more talent or what's happening with the influencers coming to present shows and all that yeah well here's the thing i've i've, I've actually i've actually I've, let me just uh, uh, tell a story around this influencer that went not necessarily an influencer but she's doing a lot of things that went into this radio space and people were thinking no um you you actually are there she's actually there because she has a lot of numbers and let's look at what happens at f first weeks yes this is what happens you 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 probably listen to the person and you're like is this person for radio but this time goes i mean there are a lot of uh, uh, uh courses that people can do online that can yeah, yeah. teach them how to present a best and be storytellers and it's unfortunate that with others they don't actually get to take it serious as someone with the raw talent would but with others they do and then they, they just open that right. room to improve and then they improve in it and it still goes but do you do you think that it's it's, uh, it's fair it's actually does it make sense for one to go and start a radio while there's influencers that are just getting platform for uh, the platform for free without having to go through studying and stuff? Well, knowing that there are people who study media and they still don't have anything going on. Anything going on. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll just say it's destiny because I'm not God and you you are, you're not. I'm not. We don't know what I mean it's it's this look at this look at this 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 way we do have different parts isn't it yeah. you can study media and i will study my accounting next thing i find myself in the media platform and you find yourself in the other platform, the other platform. Exactly. but i'm just talking about the influences because of uh they get hired based on numbers mm -hmm. do you think it's fair to actually hire somebody based on their following not because of uh based on their talent and skill not entirely it's not fair because you are robbing the talents elsewhere and also when you you look at it for others it's like they for 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 the brand itself they're like okay this is a biz, uh, business this is this decision is actually a business fit they're trying to have uh their their numbers, their numbers. exactly but so, when you look so at it's it it's not about what uh, the presenter can offer it's all about who has more numbers with others yes it's it's all about that and it's not fair honestly it's entirely not because I actually wanted to understand that because there's a whole lot of uh, influencers that are into the media space now. Mm -hmm. Like they're into media space, they're getting shows. More than people who actually went and studied media. Because yeah. a lot of them are there, they, they're not working. But we have too many influencers on radio stations and all that. Yeah. So don't you think that the talent at some point is just going to kill radio completely? No, not even. No. I mean, it's... This, this thing goes 50-50 like I already said. It goes 50-50. It's, it's, it's just a matter of destiny and parts and some things, I mean, that's just that. But do you also feel that um, there's equality in, an, um, in the workplace, in the radio station, in the workplace? Is there equality between um, male and females? Um, when, when it comes to like the, the, the giving shows. Yeah, the giving shows and the times. Because you find somebody that give to give uh, them a graveyard show because yeah. it's a male or it's a female. Yeah. Well, from where I'm seated, I've I've actually never experienced that. 
um, at the, the radio station that I'm at, that I'm from, I've never experienced that. It's also what what can you do best, and then they give you that show that is fit with what you can do best. It's not entirely on. So, oh, they, she, so she, they don't give you uh, the the slot based on the, the following that you have. It's mm -hmm. based on what you can offer on the show. Exactly. It's yeah. not entirely on. Oh, you he's a male, then he should go into drive. On he she's a female, she should do, be here. No, I've never experienced that at all. So you feel like they're just being fair when it comes to that. Like everybody gets their shows based on what they can offer. Definitely, definitely. From where I'm seated, definitely. It's not like that. It's the, the when it comes to gender, the gender is not even in their minds. Because in, in most workplaces, it's like that. Yeah. Gender plays both. Well, well, it's true with corporate. Yes, yeah, corporate, that is yeah. true. That is true. Value, that is true. Well, yes, I would. I've, I mean, I've heard things, but not from where I'm seated. Because I've, I've heard a couple of people complaining that they sometimes get the gravy show because he's a man, he can drive at night. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not based on the numbers that they can actually do, yeah. but based on the fact that he's a man, he can yeah. do the gravy show. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You're also into politics, right? If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Well, <laughs> sort of, yes. So, um, what do you think of the state of the country at this point? It's my goodness. This is South Africa, isn't it? And things are always happening everywhere at any time. And the state of it, it's just there are a lot of things that are happening all at once, let's be honest. Yeah, there's a we'll lot, get there's we'll a lot. hear Smang Mang resign, Smang Mang is, is, is out no motion of no confidence. Smang Mang has money under the Smang Mang has money under the mattress. Smang Mang is like it's just a lot that is why lately i've just I'm, I've, I've, I'm i mean i'm interested i'm always reading about these things i'm always checking out what's new and what's all but lately i've just taken a step back because sometimes they overwhelm you these things yeah they, do. they overwhelm they do. me because sometimes i get, just get mad at why is why is this thing happening why is why is the low shading what else does you know all of those things but i was the state of this country is not at, at its best state and everything that is happening, I mean, we can do better. Our leaders can do better at but all What do you costs. think uh, it's going to be the solution? Do we have to remove everybody who's in power or what do we do? Let's get rid of the old people. And, and put who? Let's get the young, the future of this country. Let's get rid of the old people. But do you I mean, do you, what? Do you okay, think sorry. also believe that this country has a future? Because I've seen um, a whole lot of young people. They're out there. They're in the groups. Monday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day they're in the groups. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Take someone. Let's just take this one young person from Deep Sleep to say. Okay. They're hard working. They're working Sunday to Sunday. Let's, I mean, also the group. They can also, anyone can make time for the group at any time. But the group doesn't mean that you're not working per se. You understand. I mean, I, for one, as the young person of this country, working so, so hard. Sometimes working hard is not even enough here in our, in this, in our country. Because it's, it's just, everywhere, it's just filled with old people. I mean, why are we saying in, in this corporate world, when you reach this age, 60-something, 60, 60 not even when 60-something, you have to retire. retire. But in Parliament, how, how old those people are? Now, it's how not a old? joke when you're 70 in Parliament. It's Imagine. Like a retirement, a retirement home. Imagine. You go there. And you think, you think that person leading everyone, leading someone who is 20-something years old, someone who's even younger, who knows how the future looks like, and then you think that our state is going to be okay. You you are letting someone lead who we have to teach how to use Instagram. Come on. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. So what's your take on uh, the open border policy? Opening well, the borders. Do you think well, we should open up the borders or we should keep them closed? Well, if you in your house, you have fences around and you have a dog to watch after you during the night, why do you think we should open the whole country? But, but a lot of politicians, they always talk about opening the border of South Africa for everyone. Where's, 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 um, where's security in that? Where is security in that? That's don't what you, they say. Like, we're, we're all African brothers. We need to be in the same place. The people can come and go outside uh, the country as, the, as, as they like. Are those African countries wanting to open their borders? The other African countries, they're not. not. They don't want to open the borders. So why should we? Why should we? So you think the politicians are just 
crazy for saying that. Not entirely crazy, but honestly, oh, that's speaking same, from that's, a point of privilege. That same that same politician, eh? that same politician, is staying in the suburbs somewhere where they have uh, uh, the beautiful wall around them. They have electric fence. At some point, they do have security guards there, and they want they're telling us that everything should be open for everyone. What's gonna look at the state that we're in at deep sleep, the con the congestion and everything? Yeah. What do you think is gonna happen? Yeah, a lot of things are gonna happen. Exactly. So that so one is do, just. Do you think that there's um people who benefit from all this chaos of having our borders open? Having police that are not working, you know, the ministers that are not working. It's ministers are like your sports minister who doesn't even know anything about sport. Mm -hmm. So do you think that they just do everything intentionally? They, is there somebody who's benefiting from this? I mean, let's 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 look at COVID nineteen per se. COVID nineteen cost a lot of people jobs. A lot of people got retrenched by the someone who made a lot of money out of it. Yeah, there were a couple of people. Yes. Let's just look at the the, 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 the basic thing, the masks. The mask, yeah. We were not wearing masks before COVID-19. Okay. COVID-19 came in, everyone was wearing a mask. Everyone was buying a mask. You see that? So there's always, if very in in so that's just that. What does it mean? When the other one falls, the other one right. rises. So you think um, the way people were making money through COVID? Mm -hmm. Mostly politicians, because there were a lot of tenders that are, were awarded towards um, a lot of people. Not only them. I mean, yes, they were, but not only them. Not only. I mean, there were people who were sewing the, the masks here What's in the wood. They were making money out of it. But I, I heard that those masks were awarded from uh, some Chinese companies. They were from China and other countries. Which ones? The surgical ones? Yeah, or? the surgical ones. No, I'm talking about the, the cloth ones. The cloth ones. Yes, people were actually selling those ones. But do you believe that those cloth masks and whatever masks... Do you believe that they were working for like preventing UK from catching COVID? Uh, no, I, do, I actually... Or was it just another business venture that somebody was just being like, I I tend that, let's do this? That is tricky. I'm not too sure. Because it's, it's I mean, it's those things you have to be well um, educated about what's, what's this. And you have to have done your research on what helps you, what didn't help you. And I feel like if they let us into shops and wherever wearing those cloth masks, masks maybe they did help we never know that is we'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> that I, is i'll true. actually reserve my my, my opinion based on that let me just reserve it that so do true. you think if uh the country do you think it would ever be equal like the all the race do you think they'll be on the same level the you mean the whole like the racial thing yeah the racial thing it's i mean we're living in a place actually a country where we're always preaching diversity 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 let's all unite regardless of your 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 color regardless of your thingy everything but i mean we we, we let's be honest as much as we're preaching that we don't we never see that happening let's let's go to to the corporate world we never see that one happening um and it's 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 so sad i mean look at the the hood you, you can never see a, a white person working here in deep suit or staying well, here I've seen renting a couple, I've seen a renting do, do, oh, you've you have yeah i have i have a neighbor that is a, a, white, person, a white person like pure white yeah, they white. do have money i don't know i'm not sure about it <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure but i'm not sure <laughs> <It's here. laughs> Well, it's just I mean that that is a tricky one. I mean it's 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 more like it's more like you saying let's all believe in, in the Bible, let's all read the Bible, let's all do that. There are people who not, will never succumb to that. There are people who will so succumb to that. Yes, I do. Ah, okay. So as a woman in South Africa, um, we've had a lot of stories about uh, the gender based violence and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you think the government is doing enough to protect the women in, in this country? Do we need. I, I, uh, is, do you is, think they're doing enough to protect the women in this country? Let me answer your question this way Is the government supposed to protect us? Because, I mean, it's, it's one thing if you are raising your boy child. Why don't you teach them that this is how you treat the woman instead? I mean, if that that was the case, we wouldn't need protection which from is, the government. Which is true. But, but to, 
but to answer your question i it, i feel like it's 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 the, there's 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 a lot of um wear out there for everyone to hear but as to the main support that is given out there obviously it's not gonna be enough it's a lot of us and we're also being told about this thing of resources not not enough for everyone and all of that and 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 and, and. but per se do we need to be protected or do we need to teach the other person that please teach uh, actually treat the woman this way then okay. we wouldn't need you to want my protect. view on that yeah yes as as okay my view on that if you have a boy child you need to teach them mm. how to treat women mm -hmm. But there are those parents which is they failed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they didn't teach or they just failed. Yeah. So it, it it comes to that where women need to be protected from those kids or have parents who fail to actually yeah. teach them. Because mm -hmm. those are just basics that a man needs to respect a woman. Mm, that's true. That's true. But with um, the current government, do you feel like it's doing enough? Like, does it uh, cater for? Because sometimes you go to the police station just to open a rape case, mm -hmm. and they will just pump you with questions. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, we need to teach the police how to actually handle such cases, or we just need to fire everybody else and bring people who actually understand such situations? Who are the people that understand? Because we already, I mean, there are councils. I mean, besides the government, let's okay. The government is. I feel like it's well for me personally. I can say that the government is doing enough at some point and at some point i can say they're not doing enough because at at, at we, we we're having a lot of cases that actually are not dealt with just like the the sex of case and like and the, all of that you see exactly those seven girls who were raped gang raped and exactly gang raped, and they released some statement mm -hmm. which never really made sense but do you think that he's failing as a minister or do you think it should we should keep him as a minister are you retired? Let's get someone new. So you believe in that uh, we should actually take out everybody and bring in the new the youth? I mean we we have the youth there, but it's probably a few, very, very few. Which are green. Very, very few. Let's get rid of the oh, Madala. Oh, Madala, what they, what do they know? You gonna tell my dad about cyberbullying? You have to, when I go to them uh, this this cyberbullying, I have to I firstly explain what cyber is, bullying is. You see that we're wasting time. By the time that I've actually explained what cyber is and bullying is, we would have solved something out there. So you actually think that um, by removing the government and putting youth, it will work, right? Yeah, definitely. But don't you think that uh, some of the people that are gonna be in power, they're just gonna try to fill up their pockets? Remember, there's poverty in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So don't you think some are just going to be the same? It's going to be a cycle of same people that are just there just to fill up their own pockets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as much as we have like bad leaders, we have good leaders. We can't tint the good ones um, because we're seeing the bad ones doing bad. It's okay. possible. Yeah, it makes sense. So how was it growing up in Bobo? Well, it was um, actually I actually I was born in Liboko, I guess, okay. and then I came to Deep Sloot. So when they tell me the story, they say I was born in Liboko, and I came to Deep Sloot when I was when I was two weeks old. Jeez. And then I spent um, some early stages of my childhood here, and then went home, and then finished everything there until varsity. Oh no, until matric. But growing up there, to answer your question, it was it was nice. I mean, that side is peaceful. It's nice. It's it was even it was less social media, so it was just okay. So you say that you not uh, you were not exposed to a lot of things, like when you in deep you you're exposed to everything. Yeah, absolutely. From crime and everything else. Absolutely, crime. There's crime there, but it's not as extreme as it is here. I mean, they you, it will take a while for me to hear. Oh, Smang Mang has been mugged. It will take probably months even. But here, right, when my Hege Jiga Mokone, someone will tell me, oh, man, man, man chapitiful, ning ning, you know, all of those things. So but like but do you think that uh, at some point we're going to get to a point where there's no crime at all in the world in general? In the world? Yeah. Or in South Africa? Let me just say South Africa. In South Africa, crime. Mm -hmm. With this hungry stomach, <laughs> that is impossible. People are hungry. There are people that go out and steal because they don't 
feed not because they love stealing because they are hungry they, no they just want something to be on the table for that night for their family or um you know for themselves i mean people are hungry people are unemployed there are no jobs it's out of hunger. everything is chaos until everyone is fed then no cry so you're also an MC, right? Yes. Um, do you attend like do you MC weddings or parties or funerals? What? Actually, funeral. I've never MC a funeral. I think it's it's still very early of my career to be MCing at funerals. It's 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 a bit uptight about. It's what am I gonna do? But um, I've actually MCed a wedding. Oh, that's I've nice. I've MCed um some um events. You know, yeah, I do MC a lot of events. But in those events, most of them, do you prefer getting paid up front or sometimes it's just because you know it's fine by you just help them out? Funny enough, I've never been paid for any of these MCs gigs. But do you charge though? Do you have like um, the rates that you charge? I do have a rate. I've never been paid. Like, I've just never. Why not? It's it's always a thing of, how can I put it? It's, 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 it's. With others, it's, a, it's out of volunteering. With others, yeah. it's it's a thing of it's oh, work related. You. Some others, is, I know you. You know all of those of those but things. Up to this day, I've never been paid for any MC gig I've ever but done. But you think friends should also pay their own friends? They just say now I'm your friend. I invite yeah. you. Will you charge me, or you just feel like I know I'm gonna go out, so I'm just gonna go in? No, at some point I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm gonna stop saying, oh, you're my friend. I should come and MC your thingy for free. Because here's the thing. Also, I don't just go and MC for free or for free at some point. Actually, let me just say, I've been MCing for free. Yeah. That's because those events had a meaning behind it. I mean, with the community development things, why would you, I even bother with money? But it's a tender. Because it's like... But there's somebody who's getting paid to actually organize the whole thing. Well, yes, they are, but I'm just there to, for my part. Oh, for part. I'm, I'm there to do my part, and I'm just like, I go there, volunteer, do my thing, and I'm happy. I so mean. you're just there to actually help uh, the, and also uplift the community. Exactly, because with the MC gigs, or most of them, they've been like local related. So it's all, also the, the thing is that just about community development, you know, all those programs. And I'm just like, I, I'm happy with doing this for free. Oh, Let me just um, do it for free. I mean, if, but at some point, at some point, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get to a point where I stop or when I get to a point where I get invited to an event where I can see that, I mean, I can see that there's no much effect probably that is volunteering related. It's only money, 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 money. I want yeah. a piece So, but how much would you charge? They just I say, know. it's me now deciding that, okay, sure. Do I go here for you? Yeah. Maybe I'm getting married. Yeah. Or I'm just doing a, you know, uh -huh. birthday celebration, but I want an MC. Yeah. And I hire. So how much, like, estimation. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> estimate how much your rate I'm going to go for. And it'll be like 100K. Anyone who wants to book me, they get to me, they talk to me, I'll send them, because it's, where, I'll send where, them. Where, where can they find you? They'll find me on Instagram. It's at Rinderani My Sunflower, and um, yeah, that's where they can find me. Also, I'm on TikTok. It's at Rinderani My Sunflower, so that's where they can talk to me, and then I'll give you the rate. If oh, it's so that's how it if I feel like this thing is doesn't talk to the community as much because I um, I advocate for that. If it doesn't talk for the community as much and you all about money, money, money. Then let's talk money, money, money. Uh, that's uh, it, it. makes sense. Yeah. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So in in terms of radio, let's go back to radio. Yeah. So what's your five year plan? Do you see yourself uh, continue as a radio presenter or mm -hmm. going into the finance of the radio station or starting your own platform? Well, um, when it comes to this whole broadcasting thing, um, I'm actually aspiring to start a podcast soon enough okay. hopefully and with the so it's gonna compete with my podcast i uh, uh, no, i mean it's no, yours no, has, you. Has, you have your own friend base like i think okay. i will have mine okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, just making sure i you know, also have sure. mine so just definitely a, a podcast and also i would love to be in one of the national radios especially para para fm so that's your that's what like you that is see you see what five, exactly yes. para para fm definitely and also um I mean, with with the the other the the the, the finance side of it, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna leave finance. Uh, definitely not. I'm still studying towards that, 
and I'm not gonna leave that any. I'm I'll, I'm just gonna still be balancing the the two as I am right now. But I know at some point, probably it's, it's a situation or, or 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 whatever, it's gonna cost me to choose between the two. But for now, we have to go both ways. Go both ways. Mm -hmm. But um, do you think in the next five years to ten years, do you think radio is still gonna be the same or it would have been improved mm -hmm. in terms of the quality? Do you think the youth will still listen to? radio or they will be on some um other things like your podcast your well some when when i get it it started off with the with the radio the sound music and then it was yeah. radio when tv came into part they were they said radio is gonna die to this day people out they have different types of tvs now it's your smart tvs everything you know or you name them and radio is still there so even then i still believe it will still be there, will still be there. Mm -hmm. but do you feel do you think at this point radio actually generates enough money like it used to be it used to generate a lot of money before do you think it still does that is a good question directed to the wrong person <laughs> <laughs> directed to the wrong person because the radio stations they make money differently i mean they they make money there are those where probably people people have money they donate their sponsorship advertising you know but all i of feel that. like the so other times they, now, they moved they no longer pretty much money into tv and radio they moved, they moved online like your social media your uh, podcast, that's why they advertise their products. You switch on the radio, you will still hear that service provider of your network uh, having an advert. You switch on a, uh, a TV, you would still see someone saying, Hey, I'm selling one, two, and three. So that one is just out of the box. But do you think that uh, having so many radio stations, does it, does it actually make sense? Because there's a whole lot of radio stations that are actually broadcasting the same thing true not entirely i mean as you so said remember thing. when i mentioned the thing of podcast yeah. you said oh now it's you have your own fan base that you catering for i have my fan base that i'm catering for there are certain radio stations where when i listen to i can hear that i hear you know i'm not the 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 the, the, the targeted the listener target market. exactly you know i mean each and every one of us have their own fan base and when you whatever that you whatever service that you're providing you're providing it for the people that you have in mind as much as i'll also provide for my own people that i have in my mind so how do you guys um compile the music that you play on your show mm -hmm. how do you compile it is there somebody who compiled music well for you or you just on my show so my show is called local is like oh, nice. what i do basically i promote local sound you know i play only the south african sound it doesn't matter which genre i do play your maskandi all those things so I you, do so play. you actually agree with the 90 percent local so, music on radio stations what saudi was trying to do that uh, radio stations they need to play like 90 percent of local music and 10 percent of international music which is true i mean if these local artists don't get support from us as the citizen of this country where are they going to get it are you are you going to recognize my sunflower as an artist yeah. after i've been recognized by the u.s yeah. Plus you see? Starving. a lot of these artists are starving you now. see so that so the, going back to your question so my my show is it's is, is is local based right or, or content nice. everything is local so how I, I actually compile my my music is um you you know every day when i'm listening to something you know because actually the, the the playlist for that certain week has to go with the theme of that certain week okay. mind you remember i can i just make an example with the, the last months which uh, was heritage, heritage month, yeah. you know and heritage was on that saturday where i was broadcasting my show mostly it was the traditional show and also i do have like your your kasi battle so i'll play i'll play the music from the the, the deep sleep artist cosmo city alexandra and all of those neighboring kasis and also i do have your old school so i go to the likes of okay. Fasi, you know all those people and i also have your your your, your weekend throwback where we just throw back to any other could be last year could be any other year so that's just that that's pretty dope yeah. so what's um your take on the issue of viola if you know what viola is no right? where um artists they have to pay radio stations in order for them to play their music mm -hmm. what's your take on that is it true or is it a myth because a couple of episodes 
I had somebody was telling me that um, they do pay that in order for to actually get airplay. Do you select music based on what you like, or is it because of uh, it's Sam or so you know him, so you just play his music, or you just play because the sound it's nice and it's um, people are gonna like it at home? No, I actually select a song because, firstly and foremost, very important, it is a South African sound. Secondly, it has to be clean, you know, radio edits, radio of, edits, of yeah, course. Yeah. And also, it has to, like, speak to the people that I have in mind when I broadcast the show, the listeners. Yeah. I can't play a song, your same song, because... I, I, money. A song, I mean, uh, oh, you pop out money or Sam is my friend, yeah, you understand? Yeah. Or because... Your, your song is my favorite no i have the listener in mind when i compile the list that okay that's why i say to you that i play maskandi i play i cater for everyone if you you you're a drama person you'll hear your shibelani music um okay. uh, coming through there you'll hear van Red coming through you'll hear all those things coming through so in the radio station viola doesn't play a role there I'm not sure. Yeah. I can't. I can't answer for it's everyone. Selected based on the good of uh, the quality of the music. Well, from my show, that's what I do. You, With others, I I really cannot. So do. you don't just be like I. Sam send me all a song on WhatsApp, and there are people which is the submit the demos in the radio station, and you be like, I right, Sam, you can send it through WhatsApp. That's not what you do. That you select the music based. Definitely, on, like, I have theme. to select on how exactly, and I, it, fortunate enough, there are those artists that I do have on my WhatsApp. Probably, I, I actually just maybe I, I've been playing this someone's song, and I do have their numbers on WhatsApp, especially the neighboring um, artists. I actually ask because some of them they never even upload their music on your, your YouTube music or any other platform. You have to go to them and ask what is new, what is popping, and then they give it to you. They're like, oh, oh, there's this one that's new. Okay, let's play this because you've been playing this song uh, for so long. You understand? But for those that you don't, actually, you have to stick to what what's there and what you can have access to because it's not everyone that just puts out their music out there for everyone it makes it makes sense yeah. so you actually uplifting the local artists definitely so you would want some to actually send you music yes definitely definitely when, and they where can they send uh, the music um there's an email of the station uh, i just don't have it here with me but there's an email there um of 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 the station yeah. Uh, that's pretty dope. If someone can just um go check me out on 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 the thing on on Instagram, then I'll direct them. So they should actually okay. send you a, a DM so that you can actually send yeah. them the numbers, the email address where to send the music. Yeah, anyhow, as long as I see the message, then. But do you think um our local radio presenters, anybody in the entertainment industry, do you think they're getting paid enough? Because most of them they die broke. Money, hey? They die broke. 90% <laughs> of them, they die broke. Yeah. It's, ish. you see the money one, eh? <laughs> that one is a tricky question because, ooh, money. It's, it's so, so, like, it's so, so easy for these people to want money to come in. But when it has to go out, it is a different story. It is a different story. I mean, exploitation is a real thing. It's in everywhere. In the industry, yes. Yes, it's everywhere. And I mean, at some point you'd see someone doing their work and you can see that I, this person is worth a lot more than what they're getting. And there are people that you can see that they're getting a lot more than they, they should worth. be getting. Is it based exactly. on the numbers? Most of those getting a lot of money what they worth more than what they worth. It's because of the numbers. It could just depend on the management, what are they basing their money on, or they can just give you something that is um, equally or not, it just depends on the on the on the, on, on the management and the setting station actually. So um, the stations have different rate. Definitely. So it's not like it's a. Obviously, I mean, you have community radios, we have commercial, we have the national. national yeah. So obviously, there's, there's levels, levels there's to levels this. To exactly. So where do you see five years, uh, yourself in five years? Your career wise. Well, I think I've explained that, didn't I? No, I did. I did. I did. Did you? I did. But I, I told you about the podcast. I did. Okay. So where do you want to see your podcast? It hasn't. Well, for now, the goal, the main goal is to launch it and see it going, um, doing what it should be doing. Because I did say that I'm, I'm an advocate for 
community development so it's going to be mainly based on that but when are you planning to actually like uh start one to give an exact date ah uh, that is that would be that would be like suicide that would be suicide but soon enough soon, soon enough. enough yeah soon enough but is it gonna be uh what um are you gonna have people in it or are you just gonna have the one yes it's i'm i'm, I'm actually it? gonna have it with a colleague of mine from the radio we're gonna um shoot it together and um yeah just do it together it's not gonna be a one man show yeah that's pretty dope well it's not gonna be like mine no like, not uh, at it's all like, it's like one man show not at all it's we're gonna be together and um we actually were thinking of putting other people through but you know how it goes because i feel like it's 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 by 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 how we actually are structuring it remember it's community development we're not gonna do it if it's just the two of us we're gonna need a lot more other people yeah. maybe you can slide in as well <laughs> maybe just just a, just a maybe. maybe yeah just a maybe, maybe. Oh, i'll still dab a leg here and <laughs> go with him <laughs> yeah so what you want to be remembered as to be remembered as yeah. honestly remember me for who i was to you and what i did for you as an individual to put it in a general form it's going to be difficult because the experience that you have of me is not the experience that Diabolic has of me. And the experience that Diabolic has of me is not ex an experience of what Granny will have of me. You understand? So remember me for what I was to you and what I did to you and the impact that I had to your life. Okay, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Do you have any message that you want to give the, the young girls out there who are actually struggling with a lot of things from you know depression and how they look and not having uh, a support mm -hmm. when it comes to career wise yeah. what can you say to them well yo that is a very it's it's so interesting because i feel like you just explained me in that whole sentence thing but one thing that i would say to those girls you know firstly just know what you want you know we'll know what you want and probably you've had people saying write down your goals and you think that is ridiculous do that because I actually i do write things and then i go back to them um a few months later and i'm like oh i used to think like this oh my goodness so do that write your goals down know what you want in life and when you know what you want in life go for what you want and also when you're going through what you want remember that there will be people who are going to criticize you there are going to be people that are going to tell you that you can't do this, you can't do that. But you know yourself more than anyone does. So just keep on doing what you can with the little that you have. And any opportunity that comes along, take it and run with it. You never know what that opportunity, that small opportunity you think it is, might take you. And also as a young girl out there, remember that no one will ever love you better than yourself. There's any, there's no any other thing than practicing self love. You know, it's 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 one thing to look for love in other people and to just look out for it within you. Look for that love within you. Be your own support system before you can expect your mother to support you. To this day, my mother has never listened to my own um, radio thingy, and I'm like, why? At first, I used to be mad until I actually understood. I'm like, I it's I've made peace with it. But also, be your own support system so that it's when true. the person that you value so much that you think they should be supporting you so so much and they're not doing that, then you get she just forgive it and you know that you are giving that to yourself. So just be out there, man. Do what you can with what you can and do what you love. And also, beware of the wolves. Be here. Be woke. That's pretty dope. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Mm -hmm. uh, you heard it, folks. Uh, this is another episode of Podcast with Soul. Yeah. When I pull up in the spot, they be asking what I got. Yeah, it's for an extra mile, an extra inch for the dot. When I pull up in the spot, 